This is the ultimate bootable flash drive. Now, what makes it the ultimate bootable flash drive? Well, usually when you create bootable flash drives, you use a tool like Rufus, Alina Etcher, or if you're really cool, you'll use DD. But the problem with these tools are that one, they don't make it very easy for you to have multiple images on the same flash drive. And two, when you wanna go ahead and change the image for another image, you usually have to format the entire drive. This, on the other hand, is made with an open source tool called Ventoy. Now, Ventoy makes it very easy for you to have multiple images on the same drive by simply copying over the ISO file or any other supported format onto the drive itself. And if you wanna go ahead and remove an image, all you have to do is remove Remove that file from the flash drive without having to format the entire thing. So today I'm going to show you how to create your own multi-boot flash drives using Vento on both Windows and Linux based operating systems. Now because I am showing you how to do this both on Windows and Linux operating systems, this video is kind of long, but the idea is for you to use the chapters in the timeline below to skip to the parts that you want to see. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to customize your Ventoy installation. So if you want to see that after you install Ventoy, go ahead and go over to that section in the timeline. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And if you're new here, welcome. If you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing. Enjoy the video. Start by downloading the latest version of Ventoy from GitHub. You can find the link for this in the description below. Click on the file suffix as windows.zip. Since this is a zip file, before we can use it, we have to decompress it. You can do that by right clicking on the file and clicking on extract all. After the extraction is complete, you should now have a folder labeled Ventoy. And inside that folder, you'll have an executable labeled Ventoy 2 disk. Ventoy does require administrator privileges. So if you see a pop-up asking for administrator privileges, go ahead and accept that. If you haven't done so yet, this is a great time to insert your flash drive. You can then select your flash drive from the device drop down menu. If you don't see your device there, you can use the green refresh button next to the device drop down menu to refresh the device list. Once you have selected your device, you can now go ahead and press on the install button. Ventoy will confirm the operation as this does wipe your disk. So make sure that you have backed up anything important before pressing install. If you get a success message, this means that you have successfully installed Ventoy on your flash drive. However, the developer does mention that due to Windows restrictions, this might not be the case for everyone. If you're having trouble installing Ventoy, Ventoy developer does include a workaround, which involves using a bootable Linux image to bypass any Windows restrictions. To do this, first we need a tool to create a bootable flash drive. You can use any tool you like, however, on Windows I like using Rufus, so the link to download Rufus is in the description below. Next we need the image to create the bootable flash drive. You can find this by going back to the GitHub link from before and clicking on the file suffix as livecd.iso. Again, the link for this is in the description below. We can now open up Rufus. Here, you can leave everything the way it is and then select the ISO file we downloaded from GitHub. Now go ahead and click on the start button, select write into the image mode and press OK. After the file has been written, the status should now say ready. Go ahead and turn your computer off and with the flash drive we just created connected, go ahead and boot into it. Every computer is different for this process. On my computer, I have to press the F12 button on boot and then I get a menu like this to which then I can select the flash drive to boot from. You will then be greeted with a page like this and you can select your device from the drop down menu. One thing to note here is to make sure that you select the correct drive. If you by mistake select your Windows drive, this can wipe your Windows installation. In my case, I only have one device. However, an easy way to check this might be to unplug your flash drive, press the refresh button and see if you see any devices that are no longer there. If you see a device that was there before and is no longer there, that's a good indication that that is your flash drive. You can also change your language by clicking on the language button at the top of the window. Now we can go ahead and press the install button. Ventoy will warn you to make sure you want to complete the operation as again, this will wipe your flash drive. So make sure that you backed up anything important. 
If you get a success message, this means that vent oil has been successfully installed on your flash drive. Now to close the program, all you have to do is click on the X on the top right corner. And after booting back into Windows, you can now use this flash drive to hold all your images. For this example, I'm using an Ubuntu ISO file that I downloaded straight from the Ubuntu website. And just as simple as that, I can now use this flash drive to boot into Ubuntu. It should also be noted that you can still use this flash drive as a regular flash drive to hold files and this will not affect Ventoy in any way. To start off, download the latest version of Ventoy from the GitHub website. The link for this will be in the description below. Click on the file suffix with linux.tar.gz. For the next part, we'll be using the command line, so go ahead and open that and cd wherever you downloaded that file to. Ventoy comes compressed in a tar.gz file, so we have to uncompress it first. To do that, we can use the tar command. Then you will have a directory labeled as Ventoy followed by the version of Ventoy. cd into that directory to look at the Ventoy program. You have three options to install Ventoy onto your flash drive. The first is Ventoy2disk.sh, which is a command line program. Then you have Ventoy GUI, which is better if you prefer not to use the command line. You also have VentoyWeb.sh, which will open up a local server to which then you can use a browser to access Ventoy. This is very similar to Ventoy GUI, with the exception that it runs in a browser. Despite having different interfaces, all installation methods work the same way, so you're welcome to use any one you want. I'll be going over all three of them. We'll start off going over the command line version, which is ventoid2disk.sh. First, we need to figure out the label for our flash drive. To do this, we can use the fdisk command. In my case, I have two devices. The first one is the SSD for my laptop, and the second one is the actual flash drive that I want to use, so it's very easy to know which is which. If you're having trouble figuring out which one is your flash drive, the easiest thing to do is to unplug your flash drive, rerun the fdisk command, and see the changes that took place. You should see one less device now, which tells you the device that was there before and is now missing has to be your flash drive. You can confirm this by rerunning the fdisk command and then seeing the device that is now there. In my case, that's forward slash dev, forward slash SDA. We can now run the Ventoy script using that device. Since Ventoy requires root privileges, we have to run the script using sudo. Then use the dash i option for install and then followed by the label for your device. Again, in my case, that's forward slash dev, forward slash SDA. Then press enter. Ventoy will confirm the operation as this will wipe your flash drive. So make sure that you have backed up anything important prior to installing Ventoy on your flash drive. If you get a success message, this means that you have successfully installed Ventoy on your flash drive. To use the GUI option, open up Ventoy GUI using sudo. Then a GUI window will open up and you can use this to install Ventoy. From the drop down menu, select the flash drive you want to use to install Ventoy. If you don't see it right away, you can use this green button to refresh the list of devices. In my case, since I just installed Ventoy using the flash drive, this device shows up with Ventoy installed. However, I can overwrite the installation by reinstalling it. Go ahead and click on the install button and then Ventoy will confirm the operation as this will wipe your flash drive. So make sure you back up any important files before installing. If you get a success message, that means that you have successfully installed Ventoy on your flash drive. To install Ventoy using the web interface, run ventoyweb.sh using sudo from the command line. This will start a local web server, and then you can use the link provided to open up the web interface. The GUI is very similar to the GUI program. All you have to do is select your device from the drop down menu. If you don't see it right away, click on the green button to refresh the list of devices. In this case, since I already installed Ventoy on my flash drive, 
the program detects it. However, I can override the installation by reinstalling it. So when you're ready, go ahead and click on the install button. Ventoy will confirm the operation as this will wipe your flash drive. So if you have anything important, this is a good time to back it up before pressing the install button. If you get a success message, that means that Ventoil has been successfully installed on your flash drive. To stop the web server, press Ctrl C in your command line. You can now mount your flash drive and you should see a device labeled as Ventoy. Now it's just a matter of copying over images to your flash drive. In my case, I'm using this Ubuntu ISO that I downloaded straight from the Ubuntu website. It should also be noted that you can still use this flash drive as a regular flash drive by copying over any files you want, and this will not affect the Ventoy installation. A Ventoy installation can also be customized and configured in various different ways. This is done with a JSON file that lives on the flash drive. However, to make it easier to use, the Ventoy developer has included a web program that can be used to configure Ventoy without knowing the syntax for JSON. This is done with a program called Ventoy Pluxen. To start Ventoy Pluxen on Windows, you can open up the Ventoy folder and double click on the Ventoy Pluxen executable. This does require administrator privileges, so if you see a pop-up asking for administrator privileges, go ahead and accept that. Next, using the drop-down menu, select the device that you have installed Ventoy on. If you don't see the device right away, you can also press the refresh button. Then simply hit the start button. If the browser does not open up by itself, you can also press on the link button in the Ventoy plugs in window. To run the Ventoy plugs in program on Linux, first open up the Ventoy directory and run the Ventoy plugs in .sh script using sudo followed by the label of the device that you have installed Ventoy on. The script will now start a local server and give you a link to access the Ventoy plugs in interface. Ventoy has many configuration options. However, given that the Ventoy boot menu is so ugly, I want to go ahead and show you how to change that. We can change the theme for Ventoy by clicking on the theme plugin on the side navigation bar. For each plugin, you will find documentation on the top right corner. The Ventoy menu is based off Grub2. This means that you can style Ventoy by installing Grub themes. You can find themes on gnomelook.org. For this example, I'll be showing you how to install this theme. However, the process is super similar for any other theme. Start by downloading the files for the theme. Sometimes you'll notice that themes have multiple variations. In this case, I am going with the orange variation of this theme. Then on the Ventoy flash drive, you should see that Ventoy plugs in created a new directory for us. To keep things organized, we'll be making a folder for our themes inside of this directory. Then inside this directory, we'll be using the theme we downloaded. In this case, the theme is compressed, so the first thing we have to do is decompress that theme. Depending on the format of the archive file, you might need special software to uncompress it. If you're on Windows, 7-Zip is a good option and I'll leave a download link to 7-Zip in the description below. Since we no longer need the compressed file, we can go ahead and delete it. Then inside here, you'll find some files. In this case, this theme comes with some custom scripts. However, for the purpose of what we're doing, we can ignore that. Inside the main directory, you'll find a theme.txt file. We can use this file to tell Ventoy the theme we want to use. Now back in the Ventoy plugs and web interface, inside of the theme page, we can use the green add button and add the full path to that theme.txt file. In red, you'll see an example of the full path, which will give you an idea of how to write it. This looks slightly different on Windows. Now it's just a matter of correcting the path. To make this easy, I'm going to go ahead and copy the path from my file manager and just paste it in. However, if you want, you can always write it by hand. After pressing OK, you'll get a message at the top noting that your change was successful. 
Many grub themes also include icons, however the icons are not automatically applied. To do this, we have to use the menu class plugin. You'll notice that a theme comes with an icons directory, and each of the icons correspond to a menu option. In my example, you'll notice that I have an Ubuntu ISO in the root of my Ventoy flash drive. And in my icons directory, I also have an Ubuntu.png file. Notice how both of the names are lowercase. This is very important. Back in the Ventoy plugs and web directory, you can use the green add button to add a menu option. The easiest way to do this is by clicking the key option. The way this works is the key will be text that is included as part of the ISO file. In my case, that was a lowercase Ubuntu. The class, on the other hand, is the name of that PNG file. In my case, that was also a lowercase Ubuntu. However, if my key was uppercase, for example, with a capital U, then instead of using a lowercase Ubuntu, I would use an uppercase Ubuntu with a capital U for the key. So the point here is to match the text exactly the way it's written in the file names. Like before, after pressing the OK button, you will be greeted with the success message at the top of the window.